Hello. Hi, Joanne. And hey, welcome. Hi. Hey, everybody. Brother Sewing, friends and family. I'm Angela Wolf and Joanne Banco, and we are Brother Brand Ambassadors. We are taking over the Brother Facebook and YouTube pages, and we just gave you a sneak peek of what's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow is the big day, and there's more than just that. But that's just a very cool teaser video they gave us. Joanne, how are you? I'm great, Angela. How about you? Good. I beautiful oh. weather here today. Did you send it here from Michigan for, to me? I sure did. I sure did. I agree. Susan says I love the music. I do too. That's why I keep watching it. I'm actually just loving the embroidery. <laughs> oh my! It's it's um the excitement is starting to really build. <laughs> Definitely, oh, it sure is. So tomorrow is the big reveal day, which um we call B two B, and then next week, by the way, just so you all know. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mark your calendar for noon. We have special educators coming on every single day to give you a close-up of what's new, not just a video, not just talking about it, and you'll be able to ask your questions. So that's going to be a big week next week. Ah, very exciting. Wow. So, Joanne, wonderful. I, how are you? You look great, and Thank summer you. is here. Yeah, we're in a little, I don't know if you can see everything there. I probably have to stand up on my tiptoes so you can see <laughs> the embroidery. <laughs> You have embroidered. Oh yes, you do. I just I was noticing your lace top, by the way. Very oh, cute. Yeah, that's my little little summer cover up. You know, I like I like a, a black one for winter and a white one for summertime. <laughs> that's awesome. So Joanne, uh, everyone who has not been here for a little while, Joanne has been doing this every single month. She promotes the free design of the month, and I believe it's on the blog. Yeah, let me just check it here. Is. It went live, I believe, on uh, Sunday. So uh was sunday august 1st i think it was right <laughs> yes and i think i have it right here to share with everyone yeah. i'm going to drop the link in the comments below just so you can go to this after we start talking about it but here you go there's the link very good let me um mention just one thing really quick on that because i already had somebody uh this morning who emailed me and had uh, a little bit of trouble downloading the free design. So let's just talk about it for just, just a second to help everybody else out there, possibly if they're running into any, any snags. <laughs> First of all, um, the, the new blog is just, it's loaded with great information. They're, you know, constantly adding uh, new things and the projects on there are really, really great. There's, they're now um, giving you a, a level and a time frame if it's a project actually make from start to finish. So I think that's nice because you're going to be able to tell a little bit, you know, what kind of time you're going to have invested in it. And um, the skill level, eh, we could talk about that. You know, skill level is kind of a, oh, it's a big term that, you know, beginner, intermediate, advanced, what does that really mean? Because there's a lot in between all of those too. So I encourage you, please don't let that discourage you. If you see advanced, um, take a peek at it. Um, you know, it might be something that you're thoroughly, thoroughly ready to go for. And same thing with basic. If it says basic, that might just mean it's going to be something you're going to be able to do really, really quick. So try to try to take those terms with a little grain of salt. And don't get too, too hung up on them for sure. Well, And, and just, a, you know, just a quick thing, Joanne, when you give instructions on many of your things, even if you're a super beginner, you give such great instructions, it's really easy to follow. So don't be afraid to try one of those. And you know what? If you screws up, then it's just called a design element. But you give really good instructions to follow. So I would say beginner on any of them because you can follow along so easily. Thanks, Angela. I appreciate that. And I really do try to, you know, as much as possible to build in some techniques, even if it is a little bit more of a simple project, so that you can pick up some new skill and then apply it to some of your, of your other projects. Um, one other thing, though, I just want to mention about it is, you know, today there are so many different what we would call web browsers, you know, and some of us maybe not even don't even think about where we're getting somewhere from wherever we're going when we're when we're doing a search on the Internet. But if you run into another snag where you're using a, a particular web browser on your computer and you're, you know, you're looking at it on your mobile device. See if you if, if you don't see everything there clearly, um, if it's missing pictures, I just want you to know that there's everything is fine with the website. All the pictures are there, but it might be that your browser just doesn't have the capability to see everything that, that's on there. So 
try a different browser. That's, you know, I used to listen to a computer show years ago and whenever people would call up with all these weird, crazy issues, <laughs> that was always like their first answer. Try a different browser, you know, <laughs> simple, but it definitely, it definitely can work. And then obviously if you have any problems and, and, you know, you, you, you know where to get a hold of us. I'm always happy to help. I to this morning I just went ahead and sent the direct link for the design to my friend who um, emailed me, and she was able to get it lickety split like that. So oh, good. Yeah, I have actually. I'm just going to bring this up real quick. I have this. Make sure I have the right one here. Your beautiful shirt, I believe, is the with the link I just shared. Yep. I, yep. I'm just looking at this blog post right now. This is so cute. Oh, that came out so beautiful. You know. I, I know that you probably experienced the same thing. And I bet you a lot of our friends here, I'd love to hear in the chat what some of them think, but you know, you, you get, you see a design and you, and you, and you like it and it's beautiful and it's, you know, maybe certain color scheme. And then you're trying to think how in the world am I going to make this work with whatever I'm going to put it with. And right. a lot of times I change the design colors. In fact, almost every time I change the design color, and I usually um, pretty much always list that as well. So if you're familiar with some of the previous free design projects, you'll see I'll put in there um, uh, original colors and then what I call modified colors. Because if you want to create it the way it was originally designed, fine. But if you maybe want to imitate what, what I happen to do, then I want you to be able to see all the color changes there too. On this particular one, I didn't make a single solitary change. I have seen so this is the design. This yeah. is that's it. Back up. were used, you know, exactly the way they come from from the free download, and it just went perfect with that that yellow um, banana color <laughs> kind of blouse there. Um, almost a little, almost a little lemony, but it's it's a really, really, really pretty shade of yellow, <clears throat> and those colors just popped right on there so they were really uh it was just gorgeous perfect perfect combination perfect combination um i'll tell you a little bit about the blouse while you have it while you have it up there uh it is a linen blouse it's pure linen and i know there's probably linen lovers and linen <laughs> not so <laughs> big of fans out there because it does wrinkle right they call those status wrinkles. If you're wearing linen and it's wrinkled, it means you, you you've got some kind of status that you've got <laughs> you've got linen on. But <laughs> it, it happens to be one of my all time absolute favorite fabrics to embroider on. It's uh, it I think part of the reason it, it it works so well with machine embroidery is because the weave is not really really tight, so the needle penetrations from the embroidery are able to kind of, you know, go right into the fabric without kind of punching it. And, and sometimes that punching effect can leave a little bit of, of puckers. It's also a perfect fabric that is uh, very easily starchable. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word or not, but. It, 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 we, we got it though, even <laughs> if it's not. <laughs> now, right? We just made it into one. But you can, you can just uh, firm up that fabric a little bit and make it a little bit more stiff so that you can use less stabilizer. And, you know, if I know that I'm going to have something that is going to be ironed anyway, I can sometimes do, do with a little bit less stabilizer because that's going to get, you know, it's going to get ironed out every time. Now, of course, I always do a test. So I'll hold up my little sample here of my, my little test. And part of the reason I tested this was number one, for the colors, I mean, I'm, I'm. It's pretty easy to see what those colors are, but I wanted to see them out on on real fabric. And then I tried to pick a piece of fabric that was in my stash that was. I didn't actually have a piece of linen, um, but I had something very, very similar. And I stitched this out with just tearaway stabilizer on the back, and tore all the stabilizer away, washed the sample, and then you know, examined it to see what does it look like now? And am I going to have that same kind of success on the blouse? So I did. So I didn't have to add any additional stabilizer other than the tear away. And then when it's removed, it's, you know, this is um, a pretty open design and it still maintains its kind of flexibility. And I didn't need to have any stiff uh, stabilizer behind it. It also worked out really nice for that linen blouse because 
linen sometimes will have show through where you're going to be able to, you know, see the shadow of the um, stabilizer behind it. And by removing it all, I didn't have that problem. If you think you need to beef it up a little bit more, you could um, consider using a water soluble as an extra layer just to give you a little bit more stability. But if I wash that after I've embroidered it and it comes out nice and it only needs a little light press, I know that I'm good to go when I actually do my, my garment. So Joanne, just a question. So when you made your sample, did you use linen fabric there as well or did you use a different fabric? It's very, very similar. It's very similar. Um, so the weave was the same. It happens to be a cotton, so it wasn't actually linen, but we're still talking natural fiber fabric, so it's going to work pretty good. A lot of it really had to do with the, the type of weave that it was. Um, I wanted to mimic what, what the shirt was made out of as far as that goes. Because that can make a big difference. That's like one of those little embroidery secrets. The actual, you know, the weave of your fabric, the 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 texture of it, the density of the of the threads that are woven together to make that that yardage um, can definitely make a difference. Definitely. All right. Bring up more of this blog here. It's going to slide down because you gave really good instructions. And I'm peeking at the chat while you're doing that because I got that over in another corner today. Yeah, somebody else likes likes linen here. I think um, you know it's it's uh it's just it's it's comfortable to wear, obviously. And like I said, it just I don't know. It just has uh it just has that really kind of beautiful feel when you have it on and it embroiders wonderfully. I like heavier linen for doing home decor projects. If you, you know, scout around and you look for linen that is actually like home decor weight, oh, that's my favorite thing to make pillows out of because, again, it just embroiders beautifully. Absolutely. Beautiful. Oh, nice. So um, I see it here in the instructions that you're, you're using PE design with this. Does somebody yeah. have to use PE design or can they just plug it right into their machine? I know that question is going to come up. <laughs> great, great question. The design itself, first of all, the design is a four by four design. So it will work in any four by four hoop. You don't need any big hoop for this. But I wanted to, again, make a little lesson out of it. So I'm showing in those instructions how you can uh, group two, de two designs together using PE design and then print a template and it's a special template that actually has the snowman marker on it so that you know that snowman marker is available for a whole bunch of different machines that have been um, out by brothers so you know if you have it or not if you have the little the little stickers um, for your machine and you can put that on your fabric and then select the same matching icon on your machine and your machine does its own <laughs> thing and then targets right onto that, you know that that's, um, that's a way for positioning. But I don't know if, a, if everybody knows that that is available in PE design as well. So you can select to have a snowman marker, and I'll show you the template in a, in a minute here, um, printed right on your template that you're going to use on your fabric. So you don't have to have an additional sticker. It's all built in to the printing. So, you know, PE design, I'd love to know how many of you have it out there or have thought about getting it. Um, we, our friend Cindy is the master of PE design <laughs> and I don't, I don't even try to hold a candle to, to what Cindy knows and what Cindy can teach on, on PE design. But I love to mix it in with my projects with just kind of pieces and parts that you would use on a regular basis. That might be changing size. It might be changing design colors. It might be printing a template. So this lesson shows you how to print a template with PE Design 11 software. So hope that Very nice. some people and get And I put the link to that down here so you'll see it and I can put it, but you, if you just go to brotherso.com and scroll to the bottom, which I'll put that down at the bottom too. So, yeah. so you have more you want to share here though, besides what's on the blog. Yeah. So let me go ahead. I'll show you first. We'll, we'll show just a couple more things on the camera. Here's the actual template. So you can see the snowman marker printed right out on there. And let's talk just a little bit more about uh, printing templates. Uh, just a regular, you know, regular printer will work. Uh, I happen to have a brother inkjet printer and obviously it prints in, in color. Now you don't have to print in color. If you have an option of changing to gr what's called grayscale, you can definitely do that to save uh, ink if you want to. 
but I bet there aren't a lot of us that print on our printers every day. And if you have an inkjet printer, they're made to be used. So I, you know, the color last that, that the, the brother printer that I have is, is amazing. It's got really large ink cartridges. It's very economical and the ink lasts a really long time. So I like to print them out in color for a couple of reasons. It keeps my, keeps my ink flowing on that machine, which is good for it. But it also gives me, again, a really realistic view of what that design is going to look like. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's almost as pretty as the, as the actual, actual stitches are. So I won't go through all the process for, for how I did this because the instructions show all that, but I was able to put this directly on the shirt. Here, I'll go ahead and grab my shirt that I have hanging up here. So let's say we were going to do the same thing over here. Okay. I can put that directly on the shirt and then I can hoop my blouse, hoop my fabric. Now I can, uh, I can hoop it crooked and still stitch it straight. But I will tell you that I did this in a five by seven hoop. And here's another little trick for you. If some of our friends out here have used the snowman marker. If you've ever had your machine say, sorry, can't find it. And you know that your design fits within your hoop. The issue is nothing with your machine. It's actually that when it uh, searches for that little snowman marker, it needs to, I call it bounce around a little bit. So when you use a snowman marker and your design is almost entirely filling up the hoop, you need to still position your fabric so that it's pretty close to the center of your hoop. And then that gives your machine, when it's you know trying to locate the snowman, enough room to kind of roll around before it, it, it finds its place. Does that make sense? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And that's really uh, a great tip there. So you still don't have to be perfect. You still don't have to be right on target with the center. You still don't even have to be straight. You can be a little bit, a little bit cockeyed. And then when the uh, machine does its little dance, I call it, and it finds that snowman marker, um, it will, it will lock right onto the target. If it doesn't, like I said, you just have to readjust um, your fabric in the hoop a little bit, but that's a huge time saver because it's really, really easy. You know, in this case, yeah, I could have used, I did this on the Luminaire. So yeah, I could have used the uh, projector as well, but mm -hmm. because my design is larger than than the projector, uh, there's a time and a place for everything. And when I have a design that's larger like this, and I have the opportunity to use the snowman marker, that's another piece of technology on the machine that we can we can use and and take advantage of. So. That makes, makes sense. I see there's a ton of comments coming in. Everyone saying that would look great on a placemat or with little cocktail napkins, anything like that. Oh, definitely. It would look pretty on, you know, because it's a lightweight design, it'll work on, on, on virtually anything and, and everything. So try it, try it on different things. I, I just, I had so yeah. much fun with that design. I just wanted to, you know, with the blouse, the blouse is kind of, it's a, it's a little bit oversized type blouse and it's kind of long and it has long sleeves. So when I do something like that, sometimes I like to try to proportion my design so that it's a little bit more in tune with the, the actual garment. So what I mean by that is if I would have done just the four by four on that, let's see, which, which side is that? <laughs> <laughs> it might've looked a little skimpy. Okay. So again, you know, you're, you're able to uh, see how I did it in PE design, just grouping those two, two designs together and then adding the, the snowman marker. If you do happen to have a smaller hoop, then no problem. You can, uh, you can hoop it twice. I, you know, you've heard me say this before and I love to say it because it's absolutely true. Once you learn how to, you know, work with your machine and position your designs, you can uh, embroider from here to the moon because you just keep rehooping until you get to where you want to go. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm reading some more comments on here too. Some of these uh, we've already answered, so I'm not worried. Uh, a lot of people are asking about the snowman. Maybe you haven't used it before. Okay. Got it. You know, maybe we can do another, another little uh, demo on that at another time. But again, um, I do show it in the instructions and I actually show the icon that I selected and it's it's so intuitive it's just kind of a piece of cake you just as long as that snowman marker is on your fabric and you touch the matching icon on your machine there it, it is right there it's all it's all automatic yep and to add that you just go into your print 
uh, print settings and you can choose whether or not you want that snowman marker on there or you don't. Um, if you just want crosshairs for a template, you can do that as well. But um, I, I'd love to know if anyone else has has actually used that feature or if that's totally new to you. <laughs> I have not used this one. I have not used it from PE Design. Because it is a little bit of a secret. You know, you're not going to know what's there unless you go into the print settings and, right. and change those actual settings. Oh, Anne says towels. Yes, that would be beautiful on towels. And yes, uh, someone asked, what's the latest version of PE Design? It is 11, I believe. Unless something happened while I was sleeping or something. I don't know. No, <laughs> Anne wants to know, correct. is this a dense design? Not at all. Very, 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 very lightweight. I mean, I, look how I can bend that and fold that. It's it's very, very, very fluid, very soft. It All of the areas um, in the flower here that are white are all fabric, no stitches in there whatsoever. And even the leaves are, aren't very dense because they're not, um, they're not all, you know, all the, the little, what do you call it? What do you call that? Fronds? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> The little leaf parts aren't connected. So that's all that white space is all pure fabric. Yeah, so. that makes it, that does make it, you know, actually you could use that on besides linen. I could think of an, a few other really lightweight fabrics, even a knit that would look really pretty. Oh, on. beautiful on a knit. Yeah, ideal. I would use a cutaway if I do it on a knit. I would absolutely still use a cutaway because with knit, what we want to do is prevent any movement or any stretch of that fabric while it's in the hoop. Mm -hmm. Woven fabric is pretty stable, and especially after you starch it. That's the other thing I love about using the starch. Once you starch that fabric, it kind of locks the fibers in. So you can see the last two pictures there that you're scrolling through are what I call going from blank to beautiful. So you see that shirt, you know, obviously it's all just folded up, but it's, you know, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing exciting about it. <laughs> What's for people like us and many of the people watching that will embroider anything that stands still, that is a great top, but it's a little boring. We need yeah. to add some wing to that. <laughs> yeah. And and look how easy it is to do that. I mean, literally in, in about, oh, probably, I mean, doing the, the PE design work is going to take you a few minutes, but the actual stitching, probably less than 20 minutes total. And the whole wow. thing's done and, and ready to wear, so. Yeah, this really looks good. And you know, uh, just talking, this would be more about refashioning. You don't have to sew from scratch. And I know some people say, I don't want to sew from scratch, but I love refashioning. Just imagine if you bought this blouse plain and then added those flowers, what you paid for that. Uh, probably double. Yeah. Embroidery is such a hot trend right now and it's expensive. Embroidery gives you boutique quality clothing. That's, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, sewing gives you boutique quality clothing, too, because you can make it the way you want it to be and you can make it special. But adding trims and, and adding embroidery definitely ups that level to, uh, you know, a, a high scale and makes yeah. it really, really, really a lot more valuable. So <laughs> from blank to beautiful. <laughs> I agree. All right, Joanne, do you want to go over to your machine? Did you want to show us something over there? I sure can. Yep. I thought um, I'll just tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch uh, switch my camera and just show you, you know, what do you do if you don't have a luminaire or you don't have a snowman marker? How could you use some kind of similar ideas to position your design um, in a simple uh, four by four hoop? Okay. We don't want to leave anybody out here. We got everybody has to start somewhere. So if you've got a machine like that, that doesn't have that technology um where there's a will there's a way to do it another way <laughs> that's a, well and that's the thing is if you don't have PE or <laughs> pe design bes lettering any of those you don't have to have that. that's the one thing i really want to make clear here for someone who's popping in that says oh i don't have that snowman i can't do this yes you can you can still do it you just need an embroidery machine yeah and there's always you know there's always room to grow in the future and in the future you might have that technology but mm -hmm. you know use what you have today and the more that you become comfortable with it when, when, and if you do decide to upgrade down the road, you're going to, uh, you're just going to have a, an easier time learning all of the new things as well. Yeah, definitely. All right. I'll do a switcheroo here. If you want to take me off camera. All right. Hold on just one sec. I'm just going to bring up while you're gone while you're leaving. I'm going to bring up, see you in a second, Joanne. Okay. Maybe <laughs> Hold on one sec. I'm going to bring something up and then, um, See if I have the right one. 
I do. Is this the same one I just showed? No. You all enjoy while she switches cameras. All right, another sneak preview of what's coming out tomorrow. A lot of fun and exciting things. I'm very excited. It's really hard to keep that quiet right now, but uh, B2B is officially launches tomorrow, and I know the brother dealers are very excited. So if you want to know what's coming tomorrow, make sure I know a lot of the brother dealers are going to be doing live shows on their pages, and you know they love to share, and they want to be the first to tell you. So be sure to watch Facebook, YouTube of your local brother dealer because it's going to be very cool. All right, Joanna's still swapping cameras to get to her uh, machine, and she'll give me thumbs up when she's ready. I don't quite see her yet. So I agree, Bonnie. It really dresses it up. Arnell, totally. <laughs> and there is her screen. Slick. We can see you great, Joanne. Although you're muted, so we'll have you get your new uh, voice there going on there. There you are. Hey, what machine is that? This is the NX1750D. Oh. Which is my, what I like to call my little brother. <laughs> little brother machine. Sorry for the messy cords here, but you know how that is. Um, so I've already got the design loaded. And what I did is I just hooped a piece of um, ordinary felt. And I just want to show you, you know, um, template wise, okay? If you have software and you could print a template, wonderful. But what if you don't? Well, with a lot of designs, you know, we're not needing to be scientifically nuclear perfect here. Okay. So <laughs> we could just get the approximate size of the design. The size is all, all, always listed. And do what I did here, which is just make a little piece of paper. And this design happens to be almost square, even though it doesn't look square. Remember, every design has a, a, a horizontal center and a vertical center. So all you need is that marking for the exact center where those two intersect. And if I put that on my fabric, and then I go ahead and snap it onto my machine. Now you can see I'm, uh, if you can see, I'm kind of close to where the center is, but not quite. So what the technology that we have in, in every brother embroidery machine of any recent, recent, recent past is in the um, editing mode. Okay. We have what's called the trial feature. Okay. And so I brought the, the trial feature up and that shows me where the exact center is. Now, just to make it a little more clear, I'm going to actually um, lower the needle down into here. And I'm about a quarter of an inch off from the horizontal marking and a little less than that from the, the vertical marking. So I could see I am not targeted on center. And by the way, this trial feature, you can actually use it. I'm going to go ahead and touch the button. Oop, doesn't like when the needle's down. And when you touch that, it'll literally trace the entire area. So if I were doing this uh, above a pocket or maybe on a collar or in the corner of a napkin, you, know, you could think of a million different places you could put this. That trial feature would show me um, the top, the bottom, the right, the left, and all the corners. So you can see exactly where your design edges are going to fall. Now, again, it's not a square design, so the tip of that leaf is going to, you know, show up differently. But if this was a, like above a pocket, I would definitely want to know where the lower bottom edge was going to be to make sure that I didn't run into my, my pocket there. Okay. So I know I'm off a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and just use my arrow keys. Oops. I want to go back to the center. Sorry. I'll choose center there. And say okay and i'm just going to use my i like to call these north south east and west and i'm just going to use those arrow keys until i have now targeted that i'm still a little bit off here you can be really 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 perfect with this <laughs> joanne did you just say north south east and west i'm just cracking up because when i was young like really young i could never remember which one was what so for all of you just think of this 
Never eat soggy waffles. And so if you can't remember, that's how you remember. Oh, Angela, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right. I'm going to use a little um, pointer tool here just so that you can see a little bit better. My needle is right there. You can see where I'm pointing to. And that is directly in where those crosshairs meet. So essentially what I did here by you know, moving that is I kind of did the same thing that the snowman did for me, except that the snowman, eh, he's a little more sophisticated, he's a little smarter. He knows how to tilt your design too, so that he can make it perfectly even. So when I put this in the hoop, I just need to make sure that I have got everything lined up so that it's, um, it's, it's plumb, you know? So if I were putting it in here, I would use my, my grid and I would make sure that that, that template was, uh, you know, the, the horizontal line was even with some horizontal line on here and the vertical line was even with some vertical line on here. So I wasn't off kilter. As long as you've got it horizontally and vertically straight, you don't have to be targeted right in the center. You can go ahead and use this feature. Just go to the trial. Yeah, it doesn't like when that needle's down. Always, always, your machine's always there to protect you. And you can <laughs> see, target from the center, say, okay, and then just go ahead and move that. And you're literally just tweaking the position of that design until you get lined up exactly where you need it to be. Okay. So that is that. That's actually one of my favorite, favorite ways to position designs. I love to use templates. Uh, they, they, I don't know. I think in some ways they get me in the mood for stitching because I'm going to see exactly what that design is going to, look like before I stitch it. And by placing it on the fabric, it's almost like a, a preview. You know, we can preview on our machines and that's great, but this previews that, you know, in, in true realistic lifelike size before I go to stitch it. So it's not only just for positioning, it's also kind of inspiring as well. I love it. You know, just being able to print that design off is worth having software in itself because of the fact, you know, if you have the projector, you can see part of it. But a lot of people who don't have the luminaire or something like that, and you want to see what you're showing there, that's exactly what it's going to look like, assuming all the embroidery works out <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're using the same colors. You know the size, you know exactly the angle, and placement is such an important thing. I mean, if you put it in the wrong spot, you might never wear your top again. Yep. And it's also a fun way to show somebody else a design. So if mm -hmm. you want to stitch something for somebody and you're, you know, giving them some options, um, you can actually print the templates out and then they can pick which, whatever they want. That would be a lot of fun with, you know, you do a lot with the, with the kids in your family and, and that would be a fun way for them to kind of, you know, it's almost like, uh, like playing with, with toys and then yep. <laughs> which one you want to bring, bring to life. So absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera back so you can see me again now. Okay. All right. I'm going to bring myself up here. Take Joanne out for a second. I have one more video for you if I could get it shared correctly. Hold on a second. Bear with me. I've been watching these teaser videos. They Some of them are just hilarious. So I've got one more for you here. If I could just, let's see if I can, uh, hold on. One momento. Let's see. I think this is it. If it's the same one I played at the beginning, forgive me, I'll still find it. It's this one or the next one. So let's see if this is it. Nope. It's a different one. Hold on a second. <laughs> of course, we could watch that one again because I absolutely love the music, right? So here, let's try one more. There's, I have too many screens open. That's the problem. All right, let's see if it's this one. No. Where did it go? Hold on a second. Here we go. <laughs> you have to love technology. And Joanne isn't quite back yet. As soon as she does, I'll bring her back up here. Here we go. Now, stay tuned. I think I've got it right this time. <laughs> I'm afraid I have a confession to make. March now. There you go. Quilt Club, what's coming out? I can hardly wait. It's tomorrow. Some of you asked, hey, what time tomorrow? Well, uh, rumor has it around two o'clock. You know how that could change. You never know. And also, will there be a live show tomorrow on my page? I saw someone asking that. Will we have a behind the scenes? Yes, we will. 
I might be a little late, uh, so just stay tuned for that. But I, because I'll be watching too to see what's going on. Uh, now I see a lot of questions coming in, and Joanne is back. Hello, hello. Oh, I lost your volume. Unmute yourself there, Joanne. Sorry about that. I said, I love that one. If, as anybody here has been in, in guild meetings, <laughs> those rings, those, those, those videos they did ring so true. It is not even funny. <laughs> uh, exactly. Exactly. And there's more too. There's more videos. They're hilarious. So oh, many every exciting things coming. I, you know, everybody just hang Hang on to your seats because um, you're going to really be uh, amazed at, at the new products and the new and the choices. So lots and lots, and lots of options for everybody. Oh, Josie, I, you were confused about the schedule today. Usually it is at 12. Today we had it at three because I had some meetings this morning and Joanne had some things going on. So we moved it to three today. So um, Rhonda wants to know, hi, Rhonda, could you repeat how to find the design to download it? Thank you. And I have a link here for you that I can drop in here for you. And then I'll just tell you a little bit. Once you find the, the link for the, uh, for the Brother Stitching Social blog, you have to go scroll through the instructions. And they have everything hyperlinked. So wherever you see something that's in blue, it means you can click on that. And it's going to take you directly where you would need to go that would match whatever they're talking about there. So in the case of the free design, it'll take you directly to ibroidery.com. And the great thing is you, you don't need to ha have an account there already set up. You can just click on in it and on, on it <laughs> and it, it will automatically download. So I think in, in most cases, not a computer expert, but, but in most cases it's going to go right into your download folder on your computer. And then that's where you'll find it. And remember, it's a PES design. These are all courtesy of Brother. Brother is giving these, giving these away, so they are in the in the Brother format. And you will always um, see what hoop size can be used with it um, in the instructions. So I'll always let you know what hoop size is is available for that. We we switch them up a lot, but you find a lot of four by four designs on the free design of the month projects for sure. Yeah, definitely. Everybody's saying, oh, I can't wait to see what's coming. I can't wait to see. There's more teaser videos, by the way. If you go on Brother So's uh, YouTube page, there's quite a few if you want to watch them in a row. I still don't think, you know, I have to watch um, a few more of them. I haven't seen all of them. But I still think the ones that were my favorite are the ones that always come out at the holidays when they have the mom with her daughter and she took no. over her daughter's room with the sewing. I mean, I could just so relate to that. It's just You're hilarious. A lot of the Academy Awards for those, I swear, because they are they are just so well done. They are really <laughs> Josie, you didn't lose your mind. We just switched on you. Yeah, sometimes it's good. You know, it, it opens it up, too, for people that maybe have a little bit different schedule sometimes to be able to hop on a, a, one of these live shows at a different time of day. So Definitely. And all these you can go back and replay as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, Marty, that's a great idea. She wants to embroider this on a fleece throw. Any changes you would suggest she needs hmm. to do? Mar well, and, uh, you know what? I have one, one major rule that I follow all the time, even though I have many years of experience with embroidery. I've also have many, many failures that have happened along those years. We all, we all have. So I would definitely test it. Fleece can really vary as far as the, how plush it is. And because this is a design that doesn't have a lot of density, uh, you want to make sure that it's going to stand up on your fabric. You definitely want to use a water-soluble stabilizer on top. I would use uh, the clear water-soluble. Just the clear looks like plastic, but it, it'll pull away, and then the rest of it will dissolve in, in warm water. I would definitely use that as a, a topper. And is it was it a fleece blanket? Fleece blanket? Yeah. Yeah. A fleece throw. That'd be the same thing. You know, I, I have another, I'll just throw out this as, as an idea. I have another tip that I like to do. And I've done, there have been some past brother projects that I've done exactly like this um, that I like to do when I make fleece blankets and I've made, I've made a lot of them. They're, they're like probably one of the best gifts you can give one of them. They're actually one of my favorite wedding gifts to give 
is, you know, buy, buy some really nice fleece. I like to buy a really nice fabric to bind the raw edge with. And a lot of times that means I'll buy uh, crushed knitted velvet, you know, the penne velvet. Mm -hmm. It's a really pretty binding on, on fleece like that. And then I'll make some type of elaborate design that has the, the name and the wedding date and all that on there. I've done that um, before. But what I like to do when I do fleece is something a little bit unconventional. I like to embroider whatever design I'm going to do on a separate piece of fleece and then applique it on. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, fleece is basically a knit. So that means it stretches. And when it stretches, in my world, that means it needs cutaway stabilizer. I use the Brother Cutaway Stabilizer and that will stabilize it really, really well. But I don't necessarily like the way it ends up looking on the wrong side. So if I do it on a patch of fabric or, you know, a chunk of fabric, a piece of fabric, I can embroider design. I can have that cutaway stabilizer on the back, use my water soluble. When I'm done, I can wash all that away, trim that piece down to size, and then stitch it onto the right side of the blanket. It kind of melts in because you're using the same color fleece that you use to actually make the blanket. And you can mm -hmm. stick it on with a simple straight stitch or zigzag around that. Uh, the raw edges are not going to ravel. So you don't, you know, you, you could even stitch a little margin away from that. But when you look then at the blanket on the right side, it looks, you see beautiful embroidery. When you flip it over and you look at the wrong side, all you see is where you, the stitches that you use to attach that to the blanket. So that's a good that's idea. idea. It, you know, it requires just a little bit of extra extra fabric, you know, so if you're buying a blanket size, buy another maybe quarter or third of a yard, use that for your, your piece and then maybe make a scarf out of the leftover <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. But um, that is my method. My, my one of my uh, tried and true methods. I've used that over and over and over again, and it just creates beautiful results. There you go. So uh, do you ever put a knockdown stitch behind yours when you're working on fleece? That's, that's, it's a, it's a great idea. And I have done that. In fact, uh, I, I know that in the near future, there's another bro brother blog project coming out where I use the knockdown stitch or um, nap control is what we call it in, in mm -hmm. brother BES software on terry cloth. So you can definitely use that on, on fleece as well. It, it, it will definitely improve any look of any design as far as, you know, making it stand up on the fabric. But you do need to realize that it does add stitches, so it could add a little bit of stiffness. And you want to just see if that's going to be appropriate um, for you or not. Um, maybe next month, we, you know, that'll be out by then. And I've actually got a whole baggie of samples that I was going to show along that line to show you different ways you can embroider on napped fabric, either with a, a, a nap control stitch and some ideas on how to, how to tame that uh, texture without it as well. So we can say oh, wow. that'll be the teaser for next time. That's the teaser. Oh, bag of goodies that we can't see yet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got one here. Oh yes. You know, Cindy, we will have to add this. Or if you go back through the replays, um, I want to say, I don't remember exactly which episode, but if you go to brother, so's YouTube, it's really easy to search. I don't know if we had titles back then, but she wants to know how to use the applique button on the Stellaire. And that's a great button. It's easy to yeah. use and you can use it on other machines as well. So if you go back through, you can probably see a great tutorial on that, but I'll definitely put it on the list uh, for to ask someone to show us how to do that again. Well, actually, you know, if you want me to, since I'm not showing the rest of those samples, I can add that and I'll make a sample of that and I'll show that too uh, next time. How's hey, that there you go, Cindy. Boom. Joanne, when she comes on next month, she'll have it for you. Because that's another way, actually, that you could tame the texture is by creating an applique. So that'll fit mm -hmm. right into it. Yeah. And by creating an applique, by touching a button, it doesn't get easier than that. <laughs> it's a great feature. It's a lot of fun to use. There's a lot of ways you can use it, too. All right. I'm just seeing if I've missed any questions. Everybody's just saying thank you. Thank you for all the tips. Good. Yeah. And Lynn says, and it's not scratchy on the back. That's another advantage of the fleece. So you can do that on garments as well. I just happen to do it on blankets because, you know, blankets are some, are the kind of thing you really do. You roll them back and you see the wrong side a lot and they get flipped around. So um, that yeah. just works really good for that. 
it's always fun to, to share ideas. And, um, you know, we, if we all have, we all do things different ways. And a lot of times it's just a matter of you tried something and it didn't work. <laughs> so right. you just, you know, kind of scratch your head and went like, well, what else could I do? <laughs> you go to sleep thinking about that. Right. And then maybe you, hopefully you wake up with the answer, but, um, it's, you know, it's playing around. Okay, so I just found another of the videos that I cannot resist. This one just made me laugh right out loud. So, Joanne, let's check this out. Okay. Cook Pub will come to order. I'm afraid I have a confession. March now. Uh, what is the first rule of Cook We talk about quilting. <laughs> I love that. When I saw that one, they picked really catchy music too. All of a sudden, we're all going to be dancing to the, what's coming out in the quote. <laughs> it was, it was, that was just. I, I, I'm still laughing over that one. I just can't get, oh, get over it. Other creative team, you get an A plus on your ads. I'm telling you, I just love it. When I want to keep watching the ads over and over, and I already know about these products, you know it's going to be good. I know. I know. I see um, a question here from. Mm -hmm. Deborah, uh, what about on a woven hat? I'm assuming she might be asking, what about using this design on a woven hat? That oh. should work really well. And I, again, I like to use a topper on that. Um, and there's really no way to test it. So hopefully your hat is, uh, you there know, she is. if you can find a cheap one <laughs> to do it on, fine. I just love testing because I'm, I'm not, I guess, I don't know what, what do they call that? Your risk adversive or something. There's some, <laughs> there's some technical name for that. But, Actually, um, I found a couple of those hats and I can't, you know, it's not a brother product, so I can't tell you the store, but it was very inexpensive, like under $5. And I bought a couple just because sometimes, and it drives wind crazy because I'm usually you're wearing a baseball hat when we're fishing, but sometimes I like to cover my shoulders and I want to read a book. I should just get one of those and embroider all over it. Win an angel with a bunch of fish and then maybe it'll, and try it because, yeah. I, and the, the hats were very inexpensive. I actually bought a couple. I'm going to test that one, Deborah, and just okay. see how it works. I, I look forward to seeing that because I, I, um, I know a lot of people who have done it. I have not personally um, have I done? No, I haven't done it. I am just trying to think, have I done that? No, <laughs> you're going to go back in your stash and you're going to find your hat hanging in the closet and go, yes, I did. I actually did a full blog post on this. <laughs> I know a lot of people that have, and it's, it's really not difficult to do at all. Just, you yeah, know, it's really not, you don't want a really big, heavy design, uh, dense design because it might be too much for it, but that one should, I, I would guess that one's going to work pretty well. So good idea. Definitely. Hi, Reen. Nice to see you. Hey, Reen. Hey, Everybody say they love, they love this. Oh, here's an idea. Think of it on a velvet pillow. Oh, yeah. That would look good. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. I, uh, Joanne, this, uh, this uh, particular show was is there anything you wanted to share? I was just saying, I thought this was really a pretty summery design. You know, it just really kind of put me in the mood for summer. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I'm reading a couple of these comments. Great comments. So our, our lips are sealed until tomorrow, probably around two o'clock. But be sure if you if you know, if you follow your brother dealer or if you have a favorite brother dealer, uh, follow their Facebook pages tomorrow, Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to just probably guess <laughs> that many of them are going to be doing live shows and announcing what's coming because they all like to be the first to do that. So make sure you have your computers on. You can watch from your phone too, whatever you want. And uh, Joanne, so you gave a little teaser about what you're going to be showing next time. And you're also going to add that little thing for Cindy, which is awesome. She's going to be very excited about that. We will do all that next time. That will be good. And we'll have another free design by that time, too, I'm sure. So we'll have, we'll have that to talk about as well. Always something new from Brother Souls. Absolutely. Always something Always. new. <laughs> Always something new. Bonnie says, what about an angelfish? Oh, I like that. I like that. Oh, and you're welcome, Esther. So great to see you. Joy, and this was fantastic. Uh, I will see you hopefully online this week. We'll be watching what's going on and see all the secrets coming out. Yep. Uh, I don't have the I don't have my calendar in front of me, but you'll be on, I think it's the first, the first Tuesday of the month next Sounds month. Good. Sounds so mark good. your calendar, everyone. You get to see, and we're gonna see your bag of goodies. You have to give us a few teasers. <laughs>
I'll I'll crinkle it a little right now, so you know I'm not I'm not lying to you here. <laughs> <laughs> and so for those that do not follow cool. Joanne, I put her website down below. I have my website. I have Brother So's website. Joanne has a YouTube show. Uh, was it once a month? Um, yeah, last Monday, uh, fourth Monday of every month. All right. And I have live shows on Wednesdays. We'd love to see you. And Brother Sows is right down there too. So don't forget their their um, blog for sewing and crafting is up. They're both different. So if you're really into crafting and scan and cut, speaking of crafting, Thursday at noon. Now, because we're not doing the big reveal on Brother Sows Facebook page ourselves with live shows until next week, uh, May, who usually comes on, on Tuesday, she's coming on Thursday at noon with a great project. And then next week, noon, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you're going to get to see up close, personal, ask questions, what's going to be coming out. And I love that feature with the live shows. You can see so much more. I'm very excited about this. Although I always miss seeing people in person too. Right, Joanne? Yeah. Yeah. We miss those days, but they'll be back. They'll be back. And I also put uh, Instagram up above. Be sure to tag Brother Sows if you're working on any of these projects. If you do this free design of the month, be sure to tag all of us because we love to see what you're doing and Brother might share it. You never know. Please do. Please do. Yes. All right, Joanne, it's great to see you. I look forward to next month. But in the meantime, I'll be watching the blog for what new things you have going on. All right. Happy sewing, everybody. So I'm going to have to, let's see, which one, which one of these videos? I know there's more. I might have to just end with another fun one. Let's see what we have. And if you want to watch all these, go to Brother Sews. They're, they're just hilarious. Let's see. Let's take this one down. I'm getting ready to make some popcorn and go for it. I still think that one's one of my favorite. <laughs> uh, but this one has the best music. So we're going to go with this one. Let's see if I can bring this up. There we go. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> we're all going to be dancing around our embroidery rooms, right? <laughs> Awesome. Well, Joanne, it's great to see you. Brother Sewing, friends and family, thank you for joining us. As always, I know you have a lot to do, and to join us for an hour is fantastic. We so appreciate it. If there's ever topics you're looking for, send us a note. And Brother, thank you for letting Joanne and I take over your pages today. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Brother Sews. All right. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow.